Just about a year ago in my inaugural speech, I announced my six-point economic plan that would help advance Montgomery County's economic competitiveness and better position our community for the future. Shortly afterwards, I also decided to restructure our economic development functions to better adopt to change in economic market conditions. My goal was to change how we can better attract and retain businesses and how we can better align businesses' needs with workforce development. Thanks to the hard work and support of a number of people and organizations, we have made great strides on these and several other major important initiatives. As county executive, I've always been proud of the county's ability to provide consistently high services to our diverse communities in spite of the serious economic conditions we faced. We did this while we also closed $3 billion in budgetary gaps over the last nine years. And just more recently, we closed an additional $54 million gap in our FY 2015 budget all while protecting essential services. We have protected our AAA bond reading, which keeps our borrowing costs down to advance critical capital projects. But I want you to hear what Wall Street has said about Montgomery County. Keep in mind, this is a county of well over one million residents, a county that is quite diverse, a county that is faced as it proximity to the federal government, federal closures, sequestrations, and a variety of other very difficult factors. Here's what Fitch said about Montgomery County. Montgomery County has a sophisticated management team that uses conservative budget and has established debt and reserve policies that have resulted in health reserves and liquidity levels. They added, Montgomery County continues to exist, exhibit a very impressive economic profile. Moody's said, the AAA bond rating reflects the county's sizable, strong, and diverse tax base, affluent demographics, and management debt burden. Moody's also said the rating also incorporates the county's healthy reserve position, which has grown in recent years as a result of the implementation of various new fiscal policies and a multi-year plan to restore, restore the county's financial flexibility. They also noted that several large projects are on the way in the county that would add further to our tax base and job base, including substantially, a substantial amount of investment, $1.5 billion in building construction in FY 2015. Standard & Poor's said, and they also took this similar view, that the stable outlook reflects our view of Montgomery County's very strong local economy and its demonstrated resilience to economic pressure, due in large part to its very strong managed condition. While the bond rating is a good indicator of our economic health, it is not the only one. Let me reflect here on this bond rating because it is important. It is not something that I've done alone. It is not something that the executive branch has done alone. But it is something that our team, our partners working together have helped the county council. But more importantly, uh, the credit due to our outstanding economic team here in Montgomery County, uh, led by Tim Feinstein, which is one of the nation's best public policy financial advisors and managers our Treasury Department, led by Joe Beach, Office of Management Budget by Jennifer Hughes, and a host of other people. This is significant for a county of this size. Our economic health has grown in many ways. We have maintained an unemployment rate of 4%, lower than the state as a whole, and one of the lowest in any, of any jurisdiction in the entire state. But the pressure on us continues to increase. Our schools are growing by nearly 3,000 students every year. As a result of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling, the Wynn case will cost us at least $115 million future in, in, for past uh, 
taxpayers and probably 15 to 20 million dollars going forward. These reasons make it even more important to expand our tax base even further and to grow our economy and jobs to meet our community's need and protect our quality of life. So today, I am pleased to give you an update on our progress thus far. First, as you know, I propose to realign our economic development and workforce system placing more responsibility in the hands of the private sector. Thanks to the strong support from the community, the county council, and many others, we now have a new Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation with an 11-member board headed by Chair Bob Buchanan. We also have a new Workforce Development Board to set, to set policies for Montgomery County's workforce system headed by Mike Sullivan and a new nonprofit WorkSource Montgomery to implement the policies, that board will be headed by Donna Cooper of PEPCO. Second, our MOVE Build program to help small businesses fill office space has attracted 26 new businesses to the county and added 187 jobs, with a projection of 343 new jobs over the next few years. Collectively, these companies fill over 100,000 square feet of office space. That's essentially the entire space of the county office building. Third, MC Square, our program to foster the startup innovation culture with support from the county, has launched its first accelerator, Relevant Health. We've also started a venture mentoring services in partnership with, tech, with the Tech Council of Maryland. And we are now continuing our partnership much stronger with 1776, the leading startup incubator and seed funder to test and deploy technologies that serve the public needs. Later, you'll see a new video on the entrepreneurship called Choose Montgomery that features our successful entrepreneurs that are making the difference in our community and around the world. Four. We wanted to streamline our development processes. To that end, we hired Mike Smith as our new development ombudsman to help usher through the development project, many projects that many had claimed that were slow in the process. Under our new development permitting system, I promised a 30-day initial review of electronically submitted plans. I'm here to announce today that we started it sooner than it expected, and we are now completing initial plans, both electronically and on paper, in 19 days. That's really significant. Also, as part of that process, I am unveiling today a new development database that would allow the public to see projects as they are proposed and moved through our system and get quick overview, including photographs and contact information as well. Fifth, I recognize that we needed to upgrade our attention and to look very carefully at our network infrastructure. So we created Ultra Montgomery to foster the growth of ultra-fast gigabyte networks. We've used public-private partnerships to connect business, academic, and federal institutions along major transportation corridors and smart growth communities through the new advanced network. We work with the private sector to deploy at our new, at a, the Silver Spring Innovation Center, a one gigabyte per second broadband without wires. This is a very big deal and more is promised. Finally, I remain committed to serving the future transportation needs of our country through a rapid transit system because much of what I've just described depends upon our ability to ensure that we have the transportation to the board. That is why I reconstituted our transportation task force to take a new look at the issue. I have received their recommendations and have directed our Department of Transportation to outline for me the plans of how we will start. And we will not start with an overall comprehensive plan from A to Z, but we will initiate in the very near future segments of this plan that would allow us to move forward. These initiatives are only a start because the nature of the work means a lot. 
Plans and programs must continue to evolve to adapt to the change in market conditions and meet our community needs. But we are making progress, and we will continue to make progress with the help and the support of all of the people that have been such an integral part of this project. Now, I would like to debut a recent video from the county, Choose Montgomery, that features our entrepreneurs talking about why Montgomery County is a special place to grow and to have a business. And then we'll hear from a few other people in just a moment. Well, we've been located in the same Bethesda, Maryland zip code, 20814, for the past 17 years. Um, we've been in this current office for the past seven. So in 1998, when we started out of my house, we had two interns who were <laughs> helping me get the company started. And then in, uh, at the end of 98, we started bringing on some professional staff. And we've grown to over 100 employees now. Um, and from those first 17 stores where we started, we're now in over 100,000 stores around the country. Well, why, why can't Bethesda be a place where this kind of company can grow? And, and I'm you know, happy to say we've really um, and felt comfortable here the whole time. And it's certainly, um, you know, in fact, we, our bottles all say Bethesda, Maryland on the bottle. And, and we're proud to be from here. We really enjoy the whole Bethesda Chevy Chase uh, area. Um, the community is I learned that starting a, a new company, especially in the biotech space, was very challenging, more challenging than I anticipated it to be. The number one factor uh, that led us to launch the company here as opposed to another place was financing. This is where the investors were. We launched entirely from private funds. The Business Innovation Network connected us. Company. We're at the point of really trying to grow and we are starting to employ people. So we came to the incubator center. People are definitely on the cutting edge here in terms of technologies and healthcare technologies. So we've been able to partner some of the interesting, you know, federal um, innovation kind of uh, projects have come out of NIH, um, they come out of, say, uh, the VA. E-management is an information technology services and cybersecurity firm. One of the newest things, last de uh, December we launched a second company that is purely cybersecurity focused. It's called CyberRx. And that company is uh, primarily focused on helping small and medium-sized businesses understand what their cybersecurity exposure is. Because if you've always had a desire or a passion to solve a problem, to uh, create a new solution, I think what Montgomery offers is the support and the resources to be able to do that in a calculated way so that you're not just kind of jumping off the cliff and hoping that you know you land on your feet. Montgomery County um, is always supported by technology. I think it's just a core industry in, uh, in this county and this created a lot of jobs, a lot of opportunities. The Bioinnovation Center here in Germantown uh, provides wet lab space. The uh, space is fully outfitted and ready to uh, set up a laboratory. Um, all of the amenities are in place and it's just really a matter of uh, a tenant coming in, setting up uh, equipment, personnel, and getting things off the ground. So Montgomery County is a great place for running a life sciences company. Uh, there are so many huge organizations which work in life sciences, which are key in this field. And so this concentration of organizations creates concentration of talent. Montgomery County is a great place to be for many reasons. It's a hub of activity. There's a lot of very bright and talented people here. There's a good pool to, of, of talent in which we can pull on. Right downtown, 
here in Silver Spring, so we're really close to the metro, which makes it really easy to get in and out of D.C. The Beltway is, you know, less than a mile away from us, so getting to Virginia is also really easy. And then there's just a lot of things to do here in Silver Springs. There's just been a lot of revitalization here in, in Silver Springs, so there are a lot of restaurants, a lot of different things to do. So it makes it easy for people to get here, to, to come to work. So we have folks that live in Virginia, in Maryland, in D.C., and it's just really accessible. We saw lots of opportunities of staying here. One was the lifestyle, the location, the variety of folks that we have here and access to them. The fact that there are universities in this area it would give us opportunities to bring in young people, mentor them within the organization, and give them opportunities to grow with us. But overall, all of those are major factors for us staying here within Montgomery County, and we don't have any plans to change our location. You know, we're now part of the Coca-Cola company, and so we often have um, people from Coca-Cola who come up here and they just say, oh, this is an amazing place to live and work. Just by way of comparison, when you mentioned Coca-Cola, and people are constantly comparing Montgomery County and other places, Coca-Cola is in Atlanta. So we've prepared very well to Atlanta based on what you just said, right? <laughs> now, let me introduce the, the head of our new um, Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation, a person that many of you know already uh, has been a leader in our community and the business field, and I think he brings a great deal of experience and expertise to us. Uh, Bobby Cannon. Bob? Well, good morning. I'd like to introduce the other members of our <coughs> officer crowd with uh, the, the new organization. Uh, our video screen star, Ola Sage, who many of you just saw, Robbie Brewer, and Sanjay Ray. And these are the new officers, along with me, for this bold new initiative that really sends a strong signal, not just to the county, but to the region, about pro, how proactive Montgomery is to work with this new economy that we have, to come up with new ways of reaching out, to, to develop those great assets, to do the partnering. Much like the business community that we all come from, there are many innovative ways that we think we can help bring to the county proce process. But like all good public-private partnerships, if we're successful, it's because we brought out the best in one another. So we look forward to the task. Uh, it's great to be able to get to work. The process was long, but now it's our, sh our turn to do our thing. And we very much appreciate the opportunity. It's a little daunting, but I think we're up to it. Thank you, sir. Let me acknowledge the hard work and the behind the scene efforts over the last year or so of Lily Chi, who has been such an integral part of helping make this progress. Thank you very much, Lily, for your work. So. Our work source uh, chair from PEPCO, Donna Cooper. Please come forward. Good morning, but it may be afternoon. My name is Donna Cooper, and I am the president of PEPCO. I'm also the chair of WorkSource Montgomery, Inc. I am pleased to really be here on today, and I would really like to take the opportunity to thank our county executive, Mr. Ike Leggett, for his leadership in ensuring that the six-point plan for economic development included developing the skills as well as the abilities of the workforce to address industry's need for qualified talent. In both capacities, representing both business and as a member of WorkSource Montgomery, Inc. Board of Directors, I also served on the Workforce Steering Committee, which focused on strategies. That group really provided the structure through which a collaborative process took place. It included community leaders, it included community-based organizations, as well as business, as well as the Montgomery County government, coming together to develop recommendations that form the basis of the new, forced, new workforce development system. 
I truly appreciate, as well as the individuals in this room on today that serve on that board, the vision that the county executive, the county council, I would like to recognize council member Nancy Florine for her leadership and support in really initiating this process as well and the Workforce Board and other stakeholders represented on the steering committee. To date, we have taken a lot of action, but there is more to be done. <coughs> As the operating arm of the new Workforce Development Board, we have moved rapidly to create and elevate this structure through which we have a new mission of the workforce system. And I wanted to outline that mission. Number one, to meet the talent attraction development as well as retention needs of strategic industries, meet the needs of both the underemployed as well as unemployed, and importantly, developing the career pathways that lead to sustainable wages and jobs and support a thriving economy. I also like to talk about creating careers. In the end, a transformed system of workforce development that is aligned to economic development will accomplish a robust system of talent development for all aligned to the future and current economic development priorities in the county. I wanted to touch on some of the actions that, we have, t that have taken place to date. We have a robust executive search that is underway for a CEO. The County Council has passed the legislation to codify as well as support WorkSource Montgomery as the operating as well as convening arm for workforce development in the county. The board has been working with the county executive staff to incorporate the workforce strategic plan into the comprehensive economic development plan to ensure alignment. WorkSource Montgomery, as well as the Workforce Development Board, has also approved a set of measures to track the success of the new system. These metrics are so very important from both an internal and an external and an accountability perspective. We are working deliberately in moving WSM, including the contracting process for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act funds, as well as fiscal operations. We have developed an MOU and MBDC to transition RX for employ employability to WSM. And we are continuing to identify alternative fund sources to diversify funding and programming to achieve our goals. I wanted to note that this is going to be a journey. It's not a sprint. A lot of committed individuals are at the table. It is the appropriate intersection and path forward to really move the economic development agenda of the county forward and to ensure that individuals in the county are having the opportunities to connect with those employment opportunities that are being created. And more importantly, that they're getting the training in order to take on those new roles. So this new structure will ultimately and the mission affords us that opportunity to transform Montgomery County, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. I'd be remiss if I did not recognize also Mike Sullivan from Workforce Development as well. Thank you. Well, a lot of this could not have happened uh, without the hard work and the leadership and inspiration of our leaders on the county council and the person who's headed the committee and been such an integral part in a lot of what we are doing today is the chair of the Fed committee and I'd like to bring her for Nancy for me. Nancy. Well, thank you very much, Ike. Uh, this is really a big day uh, and frankly, uh, these actions are game changers uh, for Montgomery County. Uh, the state of the Montgomery County economy has written, really risen to the top and is at the top of our list of priorities. And these kinds of actions reflect our commitment uh, to keeping our economy strong and growing it uh, very successfully. Uh, I, I'd want, I just want to do a few shout outs. Uh, the, Ike uh, referred to some of the comments that the rating agencies have made about us. Uh, which supports our bond rating and establishes us as a national leader. 
And some of the things they pointed to as well, they've given a great nod of approval to the work we've all done on our master plans. Uh, projecting and providing for future growth areas in the county, trying to be nimble, trying to find new ways to support our, our burgeoning high-tech and biohealth environment. I want to point to our chair of the planning board, Casey Anderson here, who's been a great supporter and a great leader in all that. I'd also want to recognize Rich Bendis from Biohealth Innovation, uh, a true uh, leader in being nimble, being creative, and finding new ways to support the entre entrepreneurship and innovation that makes us great. Um, Sharon Friedman has done a tremendous job in the workforce development effort. We really thank Sharon. And of course, uh, someone on county staff who has been through uh, many, many battles with us is Tom Street here. And I want to recognize him in particular because he's written a lot of the, helped us put together a lot of the legislation that, that nails this structure for us. So this is a really very exciting time. I know we're all thrilled about where we're going with this. It's a real statement of Montgomery County. Uh, so it's a very positive time for us. And I thank you, Ike. Uh, for making this happen this way. Uh, Nancy mentioned uh, Casey Anderson, uh, and let me bring Casey up now because we want to um, introduce our development database presentation, which I think will be very, very enlightening for many in our community. Casey, please come forward. Thank you. Uh, I was reading uh, a um, real estate analysis firm's discussion of the comparative uh, pros and cons of Montgomery County versus Northern Virginia, D.C. for uh, new uh, business locations. And one of the main points it made was that there are not, uh, at least in the view of this analysis, there were not very many sites available uh, in Montgomery County for a new large employment use to, to locate. And I know that's not true. But it's not good enough for us in government to say it's not true. We have to have the facts. And uh, the tool that you're going to see today allows us to show very uh, easily in real time where there are locations that are suitable for anybody who wants to come, come to the uh, county to expand or to start a business, to relocate a business, where they can be not only accommodated where there's physically space, but where there's actually a plan that's been approved or has been submitted is already uh, working its way through the approval process and, can, and uh, is available. So I think that that's going to be a really uh, important tool. Uh, one of the things you're not going to see today, but I, what I wanted to mention, and it ties in with one of the th items that's on uh, Mr. Leggett's uh, top six uh, economic uh, development priority list, is streamlining developments. We've worked very closely with DPS over the last year, year and a half or so to slash to a fraction of the amount of time it used to take to get a record plat approved. And Rose Krasno, our deputy uh, planning director is here. She's been integrally involved in that, working with Diane Schwartz-Jones and others. Part of that is a technology issue. We've implemented ePlans, which is an electronic system for filing plans that allows us to move the plans through the process to the different agencies and the different people within those agencies that are responsible for making sure that everything is all according to Hoyle. But it's also about cooperation. And it's about the relationships that we have. And I wanted to, the the main reason I wanted to get up and talk today, and I didn't want to take a lot of your time, but I wanted to say Ike Leggett has been a fantastic partner. We are working together closely on every single economic development issue uh, in the county. And with the county council, I could ask for no better boss than Nancy Florian, chair of the Fed committee, and her colleagues on the county council. We are all absolutely committed not only to attracting and growing business opportunities in Montgomery County, but also to working together collegially, cooperatively towards the common goals of solving problems, figuring out where we have uh, obstacles and where we don't have obstacles, to the point I started with, to making sure that people understand that some of the things that are perceived as barriers to economic development in the county are not, in fact, uh, based in fact. So I think that uh, I hope you'll uh, appreciate the work that went into this a tool and see some of the value that it provides, but also to understand that we are in deeply engaged with county government on the full range of economic uh, development opportunities. I'm looking at Pete Fossman, who's just uh, started work uh, making sure that the White Oak uh, master plan can be implemented. That's another great example. We are uh, deeply engaged with our partners in county government, both uh, the county executive and his team, and also the county council 
at moving the ball forward for Montgomery County on all of these fronts. Thanks very much. So um, hi, I'm Chris McGovern. I'm going to be demonstrating the development database. So just bear, me, bear with me for one second. So um, I was one of the folks brought in on this project with the uh, executive office, along with uh, Montgomery Business Development Corporation and DED. And one of our goals was to establish uh, an easy to use uh, d database of projects that uh, we can filter by status or development type. And we wanted to include, add to these things, uh, uh, narratives and photographs of, the, of them. So uh, what you're seeing here is, um, is this uh, the inventory. Now, we, we, the, on the left, we have, uh, you can filter it by the residential mixed use, the development type statuses, as well as the, uh, the status of the projects, proposed, approved, or built. Now, uh, this is significant developments, um, and what that means is that residential units of 10 or greater are, are in this one. And also, when it comes to project built, only projects that have been built within two and a half years are included. This is an automated uh, database, which means that, so for instance, when something does become two and a half years old, it will automatically come off of this list. Um, when something is proposed, newly proposed, it will appear on this list with a red icon, as you can see here um, on this little checkbox. Now, uh, right now, everything is checked on. Below the filters, you see this, um, I'll get rid of the filters for a second. Oops, wrong one. This is the, without, with all the filters checked, this is the entire list. Right now, what you're seeing is about uh, 250 projects. And you can see that each one has an icon. One, this one represents a housing location. This one would be retail. All of these coincide with the filters on this little checkbox here, these icons. So for instance, if I remove the commercial icon, or rather, you can see a housing icon here. If I remove the residential icon, you'll see that the list updates and a number of things disappear. So, um, so uh, like many web apps, uh, there's some common things here. For instance, this box here is just a, geo a geolocator. I could type something like Silver Spring, and it should zoom in to Silver Spring. sure if I'm hitting the right button here, but I'll just zoom in manually. So in addition to that, we have a legend. You can see that we have additionally in purple icons that are the local capital projects from the Department of General Services. And you can switch base maps. If we wanted to go in closer and see the uh, high-res imagery, we could switch to that. So, and then what happens is you click on a project, and it will bring up a pop-up. And then once you select a project you're interested in looking up more about, you can click the link, which will pop open our existing development uh, activity information center, a website at the uh, planning department that's been in existence for roughly 10 years. But to this web page, we have added the database of narratives and photographs from the Montgomery Business Development Corporation that give a, a sense of uh, description to the project. But what's, it's interesting to note, though, that, that it's still it, it's a, it augmenting our existing DAIC website. So it's still able to leverage the, um, sorry, I'm touchpad's a little touchy for me here, but um, it, we still have the existing documents. The site plans are still visible. The approval information is, is here. The contact information for uh, the developer and the owners are here, as well as the um, other associated plan types. Lastly, I'll just show that um, there are, like I mentioned, the uh, general services neighborhood projects. And so those are here as well. And you can open up that page, and that will open up to the information regarding to some of our other capital projects, like 
the Silver Spring Library. And that's updated by uh, the general services. So I think this will help aid the, uh, the economic, develop economic uh, development and uh, uh, developer communities. And, um, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. I think when you look comprehensively at uh, what has occurred over the last uh, 11 and a half months, we've made tremendous progress. Uh, but let's keep in mind uh, that we were not standing still uh, the prior seven and a half or eight years. When you look around the county, you see all the wonderful plans and all the things that we've built on. But we cannot simply rely upon the status quo and hope to meet the competition and prepare for the future without making significant change. Uh, you see that we are willing, able, and have in fact made a great deal of change over the last year. Uh, and we are not through. Uh, we are looking for bigger and better ideas, uh, more ways in which to be helpful uh, to ensure that our businesses uh, can thrive in Montgomery County we can retain them and attract others as well. Uh, let me, before I open it up to questions, uh, answer the question that I'm sure that's on the lips of some of you. Uh, that is my health. <laughs> uh, I am healthy. I have been out for the last uh, 10 days or so uh, due to an operation. Uh, the operation was for a case of spinal stenosis multiple spinal stenosis. Uh, it resulted from, at least a recurrence, of a car accident that I had five or six years ago. And so I've struggled with it for the last five or six years through exercise, physical therapy, and medication. About five months ago, uh, we realized that the medication was having a very serious side effect. That is, that it was causing some internal bleeding that had to be rectified. And they concluded that the medication that I was taking to assist in the spinal stenosis was causing the internal bleeding that was very, very small and almost not detectable. So I was caught between a rock and a hard place. If I had taken the medication, uh, it causes bleeding in the stomach. If I didn't take the medication, it caused a problem with my back. And so for the last three or four months, uh, we searched for an alternative to try to find a way in which to resolve the problem. And ultimately, uh, it was concluded because of the nature of it, the seriousness of it, and the fact that there were multiple, multiple sections that needed to be dealt with that I needed to have an operation. So I had the operation about 11 days ago. Uh, I am now back. Uh, the challenges that we talked about before, I believe, have been resolved. Uh, I have committed to a slightly change of work schedule for the next two weeks. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I think everything is OK. So that I have now asked a responded to the question that I'm sure many of you wanted to ask. Uh, but if there are other questions related to anything that we've talked about here today, uh, I am prepared, uh, we are prepared to answer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we talked about any specific the operation that you had to do. Well, first of all, I think we start with the question that Casey started with the assumption that there is less of an opportunity availability in Montgomery County for projects and where they could be located. Uh, for example, now there's a great deal of discussion around the county about location in places where there is transit, uh, the uh, lifestyle that many young people want today. And we can show uh, by the database that there are great opportunities around. And we can identify those without people ever even coming to Montgomery County to look at them first, because they could use the technology to make that determination. Uh, we are able to do so. On workforce, um, it is a challenge because, as you know, we have a wonderful school system here, wonderful colleges. Uh, 
we want to make sure that we retain the people that we are training, but we want to train them for the jobs that are relevant for the future and train them for the jobs which our employers are looking to fill now and in the foreseeable future. By realigning all of this together much more closely with the private sector, I think that we can provide the training, uh, we can provide the education that they need, and ensure that we have the workforce uh, to respond to this changing economy. Keep in mind that a great part of what we've had in the past in this area has been a great reliance upon the federal government. And as you know, the federal government's jobs have not grown as rapidly as we would like to see. And therefore, we must change in order to ensure that we uh, have the jobs in the private sector and the people trained and well for those. Are you talking about like vocational programs or like some type of mentoring, private mentoring? It's really all of the above. Working with our colleges, uh, working with some of the employers, uh, that we will have all of those things prepared and ready in order to meet the needs of the workforce for the future. Yes, Can you expand a little bit on your request to DOT uh, to propose some less expensive alternatives? Yeah. As you know, my initial reaction uh, was to have uh, the transit uh, uh, authority uh, that will shift a great deal of our transit operation in one swoop. And obviously, there's been a great deal of reaction uh, to that uh, program as it looks from a very large uh, set of, uh, of requirements. A good part of what we can do if we do it in small parts, we can really do without a transit authority. But if you want to do the comprehensive overall program, uh, it is hard to see doing that without some type of financial rearrangement within the county in that we never intended that we would do it all at one time, then we thought we would go back and start on a piecemeal base and do it from within the authority that we currently have. So can you talk a little, what routes are you talking about and how much less expensive are you talking about? And given the county's fiscal situation, how do you, how do you finance it? Well, right. Well, the good thing about the transit authority and the transit operation was that you never have to do all of it at one time. It was always assumed that you would do it in piecemeal over a period of time. Uh, there's still a question of where we would start. There are recommendations that are now being formed for my response that will look at two or three routes here in the county and see which ones we would start with. But never was there an intention that we would go full force and do all of them at one time. But the recommendations, I think, are now forthcoming to say, okay, here's where we could start. And what we would like to do is to start in areas that are aligned with uh, potential job growth, transportation needs, as well as the future challenges and the uh, congestion that we currently have in the county, and making a recommendation on those. So are these the routes that you've been talking about in the past? Um, that would be the first ones out Right. There, there are no new routes. It's just the question of which ones will be at the top of the list as opposed to the bottom. What kind of timetable are you working on here with, with DOT? When do you expect a proposal back? When are you going to have a proposal for how to pay right. for this? I hope to have a recommendation that it will at least be considered in the budget cycle that will come up next spring. So if, if I could piggyback on that. Most of our listeners tend to be in their cars listening, counting their dashboards because they hate the gridlock. How soon might they see the impact of what you're trying to do here? Well, if you look at some of the uh, more doable locations, uh, for example, of bus rapid transit, uh, there are some that can be done relatively fast, depending on what routes you take. Uh, because what you're doing is simply realigning in some places some places it may mean that you have to exchange some lanes uh, and but we will have to come up with the resources in order to do it. The more comprehensive things uh, that we need to do, for example, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the how we deal with uh, the up county areas uh, may take a little bit more time because we cannot do that within county resources, but we need a great deal of help from the federal and the state government. Is it your hope that if these one or two routes happen, that maybe people see them in action and will win a little more political support for the idea of the independent authority? Well, we could do it all even without the independent authority. 
the question with the independent authority, you could do it faster because you will be able to harness the resources in a way that you cannot do it with the, the traditional process. One of the advantages may be, certainly, when people see how well they work and the impact it would have, that it could, in fact, make certain that we can move some of the ones faster. So that may be one of the benefits of it. But keep in mind, from my perspective, I had never said that we were going to do all of the routes that were listed in the original recommendation. I've always said that we were going to do it on a piecemeal basis, even if we had the independent authority. It would simply mean that we will do more faster through that process than we can through the traditional process. So is the authority dead, the idea of an authority dead for the first time? I'm not sure. The question may be just what he just stated. It may be that after we've seen it and say, okay, these routes work pretty well. Uh, the fears that we once had about uh, how we can uh, deal with this type of authority probably by that time may not be as um, germane to some people. And then uh, 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 some, somewhere down the line, you still can make that jump to say, okay, let's move much faster through an independent authority or some other arrangement that will allow you to do so. In your budget for next year, it's almost certain that there's going to be some sort of tax increase, maybe property taxes. You've listed a lot of things that you're doing well. Would that set some of, some, some of it back by having an increased tax? Yeah. What I've said about a tax increase, the following, that if you look at all of the requirements, all of the things that are included in the budget, the fact that we are now entering um, negotiations with our unions, all of our unions, and you look at the impact of the win case uh, and look at our projected revenue, and if we wanted to maintain the same level of services, that that would require a tax increase. I've never said that I would oppose a tax increase, but if, again, you wanted to maintain that same level of services, if you did want to dip into your reserves, if you wanted to, if you wanted to respond, which we have to with the win case, depending on what that amount may be, and our projected revenue and to maintain those services, there's no way you could do that without a tax increase. The recommendation from me very well could be that we're going to reduce services even further, or that we may do some other things as well, or some combination therein. Yes. In terms of, you had um, entrepreneurs from the community talking about why they chose Montgomery County. Uh, some entrepreneurs in the restaurant industry continue to complain vociferously about the alcohol management and system here in the county. What would you say, I know that uh, the comptroller has written about it, he's going to be in Chevy Chase tonight talking about the local economy and that impact. He insists that you could do better than the $35 million that you get each year from the current system. Well, I hope that he would demonstrate it to us how we can do that. Uh, I'm all open for that. Uh, as you can tell, I am not a person who believes strongly in monopolies. I said very early we needed to change our economic development from a county department to an independent authority. We've done so with workforce. I wanted to do so with transportation. Uh, when I looked at for example, going back many years ago when I served as the chair of the county's Human Rights Commission, demonstrating out in front of the South African Embassy about apartheid at that point in time. And a gentleman walked up to me at the end of the demonstration. He said to me, do you realize that Montgomery County is selling South African wines in your liquor stores? I was shocked. So my initial response was, boy, that's wrong. I'm against this, we should get out of this business. Now, I haven't said that, and given my beliefs about what we could do independently, I have to look at this in a realistic view. I also have something else that is my responsibility, that is a fiduciary and a legal responsibility to the taxpayers of Montgomery County. We have borrowed and have bonds of up to over $100 million of things that we've done on the liquor. If you remove that amount of money, telling the controller, if you remove that amount of money, then my view would be, how do you substitute that without the question you just raised of a substantial tax increase in order to make up the difference or some reductions? Um, I have no problem of a discussion about us moving away from it, but please provide a viable plan 
that will show us how we're going to get in excess of 30 plus million dollars, not one year, but every year. And no plan has come forward without that. And so I think there is an irresponsibility on the part of some who would simply say, we could just make that up. No, you just can't make that up. That's not going to happen. And we need to be realistic about that. And if he shows and demonstrates that, then I would like to see that. Keep in mind that to, to tell you this other point about this, that the county has a budget of $5 billion, therefore $30 million is such a small fraction of that. Well, that's not quite true because nearly 60% of that budget is already legally obligated on the law for education. 8% of the budget goes for debt service. 3% of the budget pays for the health of retirees. 14% of the budget is for public, for public safety. 4% of that budget is for our transit system. So when what you have left is less than 15%. So if you exclude $30 million out of that portion, that is a devastating impact. And when you conclude that with what has happened in the Wynn case and all the other challenges, that's a very serious problem. So I would love to see those who are arguing, let's get out of the business, let's make up this difference. Because what you are asking, basically, would be for the taxpayers of Montgomery County to pay higher taxes for roads, for schools, and for other libraries and everything else in order for someone to have a more convenient for liquor in the county. And the problems that we hear from some in the industry, uh, I'm sure that there are some problems, but a lot of it is really overblown and it's really not as bad as people have described it. But if you're in the business, you find a way to make a couple extra dollars, uh, you'll hype everything up as well. But those problems are nowhere near anything that they've stated. I, I would love to get out of the business. But I have a fiduciary responsibility for this 30 plus million dollars and the bonds and the taxpayers of Montgomery County. Do you, have you heard from any of the bond rating agencies that have given you such glowing reviews or any of the, uh, the bond holder representatives expressing concern? We have a letter I think we'll give to you from the, from the, uh, from, from the uh, bond council. And what bond council has said, what would be the replication, what would be the implication of moving to this? And so if a legislator wants to vote to run that risk, given what bond council have stated, given what the hard facts are stated, then they are telling the people of Montgomery County, I am prepared to, for the convenience of what we've just described, to in effect potentially increase the taxes on the people of Montgomery County potentially ruin this AAA bond rating that we have in order to get the convenience that you just described that is overblown in the first place. When you, yes. Will, you mentioned the wind decision. When will you know how much money this going to cost and when your green funds will be sent out? Well, as soon as the controller stopped uh, telling people to get, stop um, uh, telling people to file and go back and get tax returns. In fact, he's making, he's, he's making the problem worse on both ends. He wants to take the $30 million away from us. Now he wants to increase the penalty under the Wynn case. So it's a pretty big impact for us. So I don't know that yet, and at some point in time, we'll get the real answer. Just one more. One last question. Just to close the circle on the health issue, can you assure residents that you're going to be able to complete uh, your term of office uh, despite the back issues? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can ensure that. In fact, um, I told the doctor uh, right before the operation, I said, I'm sure that you're going to do well. But I said, I have one test to make once this operation is over. If I'm able to beat Saul Brown in tennis, everything else is gravy. <laughs> so I'm assured of that. <laughs> Thanks very much. We'll be around for a few more questions.